Now here we are talking about over 1.5 million people in protected camps, you know, camped and thousands of children being abducted day and night. We have a number of the children who were forced to kill, who participated in killing other children, who saw many other children being killed. People have been dying from guns, people are dying from hunger, people are dying from AIDS and what have you. And when will this finish? On the surface, normal life in a typical Ugandan town. But beneath this deceptive exterior, lie the scars of one of Africa's longest running but forgotten conflicts. At the Gusco Rehabilitation Centre, a few of the lucky ones, these children managed to escape the murderous clutches of the Law's Resistance Army, and it is here that they will take their first tentative steps towards a normal life. Some of these children have killed, Many have been raped or forced into acts of cannibalism. All of them have been brutalized. All are scarred. Gusco, as in Gusco Reception Center, was established basically to rehabilitate uh, children who were abducted, taken away from their families into captivity by the Lord's Resistance Army. And they were coming back when they were very weak, in tattered clothes, and uh, severely malnourished. So Gusco was established to rehabilitate, care for, and support these kind of children. Uh, one of the basic activities that Gusco Center does is to give counseling to the children. We have a number of the children who we are forced to kill who participated in killing other children, who saw many other children being killed. So that affects, you know, the mental well-being of the child. Like now at Gusco Center, we are seeing a trend of, you know, reabductions of children. We rehabilitate them, we send them home, and they are reabducted again by the rebels. Sometimes for, for one child, it's the third, it's the second, it's the fourth time. Jessica was just nine years old when the rebels abducted her. Mm. 
For now, Jessica and the other kids at Gusco are safe. But when the time comes to go home, they will find themselves once more at the mercy of the rebels. In every village, children like Eric and Walter live in constant fear of abduction. Which is why Eric and Walter and thousands of other children like them now walk every night to the relative safety of Gulu town where they take shelter at one of five overnight centres. And those who find no room at the centre sleep rough on the streets instead. Outside the towns, close to a million people now live in protected camps. Displaced from their homes by war, they must now endure the humiliation, despair and dependency that comes with life in a camp. The people in the camps are very poor. I, I mean, their life is horrible. If life has meaning, where one has some, uh, some freedom to choose and do what, can send the children to school. And if that is not there, then you are not living, you are only existing. Like the animals in the bushes, like trees which are just there shaking their leaves when the wind blows. Yeah, the people are, to me, they are not living, but they are existing. They are next to dead, this is what I'm saying. For the last one year, virtually we need to provide 100% food rations. Because people can hardly go out of the camps two kilometers away. You will enter the, the, the rebel uh, areas. And for the people living in dozens of camps like this throughout the north, the food distributions organised by the United Nations World Food Programme are all that keep them from starving. Even in the camps, our people are not safe. Even movement between camps and town, our people are not safe. Nobody outside seems to care. Nobody seems to think. Even our government seems not to care, not, seem not to bother about this. So we hope that the UN will do everything possible. They've done it into the DRC in the name of a humanitarian support, in the name of a humanitarian uh, crisis. And uh, people in Bonia are now being, being protected under the UN mandate. Uh, the British, you know, our former colonial masters, did it very successfully in Sierra Leone. It was the same scenario. You know, they, they, they went in there, they were able to pressurize the rebels to accept dialogue, and peace is now in Sierra Leone. There have been two options proposed for ending this war. One, military. 
the government has been struggling with this option for the last 17 years. So we said, why not try another option, dialogue? We thought it would be appropriate for UN, especially the Security Council, to take this and discuss it seriously. Because the UN was founded to see that no war continues after the Second World War. And no more people lost by war anymore. 